Hi everyone. In one of our previous examples, we developed a mobile application that can scan goods and manage inventory on a mobile device. You can find the link in the video description. It's a working application that can be used to perform real work in a real warehouse. However, as a rule, a business application needs more components. Companies in the real world have managers who need to receive up-to-date inventory information. Thus, we need to implement data exchange between our warehouse mobile app and our back office software. We are going to use the following scenario. A warehouse worker performs inventory control. Upon completion, the data will be uploaded to the central database. Back office employees then analyze this data and use it in their business processes and decision making. Implementing this scenario will involve two distinct tasks. The first is to develop a server application for the back office. We will continue using the 1C Enterprise platform since it's perfectly suited to the task. Second, we will complement our mobile functionality with a data exchange feature that will allow it to talk to the server application's database. The 1C platform supports a number of exchange options, web services, files, COM objects, etc. In our example, we will use the REST API exchange mechanism using the OData protocol. The REST interface enables reading and modification of 1C enterprise data, as well as creation and deletion of data objects. In our example, we will demonstrate how to implement data exchange between two apps developed on the 1C platform. However, the primary use of the REST interface is an integration with third-party systems. This is easy to do because OData clients exist for almost all major platforms. Let's create a new configuration for our application. Name it Mobile Scanner Server. In this example, we're showing a previously created configuration. In its properties, we set PC application and start adding objects for the data that will be downloaded from the mobile app. First, create the product's catalog. Add one string type attribute, SKU. In addition to the product's catalog, we need an object that will receive the inventory document from the mobile application in order to view the products that have been scanned. Let's create the inventory document. Add a tabular section, products. Next, add three attributes to this section. Product, type catalog ref products. SKU, type string, quantity, type number. If you recall, this same data structure was present in the mobile application. Having created these two objects, we have finished setting up the central database that we'll use for data exchange using the OData protocol. Now, we only need to publish our database on a web server and set up one more thing. Let's open the menu, Administration Publish to Web Server. Here is where we set the publishing parameters. Our publication name is what will appear to the outside. Select Web Server. It can be either IIS or Apache. Next, specify a directory where the publication itself will be executed. Then we need to check the Publish the Standard OData Interface parameter. Turning this parameter on enables interface publishing. We do not need the other check marks, so we can disable them. Click the Publish button. We have successfully published our application. Now our database is available on the web server for those client applications that know how to connect to it. However, however by default, the objects that we created earlier are not available from the outside. In order to fix that, we'll need to set up one more thing directly in our app's user mode. Launch the application in 1C Enterprise mode. To publish the objects, use the Composition OData EPF Auxiliary Data Processor. You can download the processor using the link in the details to this video. Open it. Here, we can specify objects that we want to publish. In our case, select the Products Catalog and the Inventory document. Click Execute. Now, both our objects are available for third-party applications from the outside. To protect our data from unauthorized users, we'll need to restrict data access using a special mechanism embedded in the 1C Enterprise platform. The platform allows you to flexibly manage access to data and provide external users with access to only specific data and objects. Let's open our configuration in Designer mode, expand the Common branch, create a new role, Administrator, and enable access rights for all the configuration objects.
After creating this role, add a new user and assign them the administrator role. Create a password along the way. Click OK. Now, only authorized users who have the admin login and password can enter our database from the outside. We have finished setting up the server part of our application. Now, let's improve our mobile app. Open the configuration in designer mode, select common forms in the metadata tree, and add another command. Let's name it exchange. Drag and drop this command to the form. The exchange button will automatically appear. Clicking it will open another form that we will name form exchange. Later, we will write data exchange code in this form. A data processor for opening it using a button looks like this. We will also need to store parameters for connecting to our server-side database. For this, we will use a familiar object called a constant. Open constants and create four new ones. Server name, type string. Server port, type number. Login, type string. Password, type string. Now, let's create the form where the exchange will be performed. Create a new common form. Name it form exchange. Create two commands. The update products from server command will receive our list of products. The put products to server command will place this list on the server from the mobile application. To simplify the code in our example, we will not check for availability of products. In other words, we will receive and upload the entire list. In the real world, this list may be extensive and the exchange could take a long time. Now, let's create a data processor for the update products from server command. Processing will be executed on the server. First, we receive our connection parameters from the server name, port name, login, and password constant. Next, we form a string for connecting to the server. This is that very REST API that we published. Here is the name of our publication on the web server. Here, the object that we want to connect to is described. We are currently working on the products catalog. JSON is the response format that we want to get. Then, we use standard methods to generate HTTP connection and HTTP request. For HTTP connection, the get method is used. We transfer the login, password, server name, and server port. In response, our connection returns the data in a string format using the getBodyAsString method. Since we requested a server response in JSON, we will accordingly process the response in JSON reader format. format. Here, we carry out serialization and close it. As a result, we receive an object containing the value array. This array contains, as an element, the entire product catalog sent by the server. In other words, we start processing this array in a cycle. For each array element, we get its attributes. The product catalog has the following attributes, code and description, which are standard for any catalog in 1C, and SKU, which we added. Also, each 1C object has a standard attribute called ref key. The server returns it to us as well. This attribute is essential for us since we can use this unique key to synchronize the catalog value on the server with the catalog value on the mobile device. Here's how we do that. First, we attempt to receive the products catalogs that are on a mobile device using the reference sent from the server. These two strings serve, these two strings serve that function. If this object exists, the code will return a particular product to us. Otherwise, if there are no products on our mobile device, then our object product variable will be type undefined. And consequently, we'll have to create this item on the mobile device again. The given code fragment performs this function. Let's create a new element in the products catalog. Set the reference received from the server. Specify the code, SKU, and description for it. Thus, having received the full catalog from the server, we create only those elements that do not exist on the mobile device yet. As for the ones that were generated earlier, we simply don't process them. Let's look through the code once again. First, we receive our connection parameters from the constants. Then, we generate a connection string to our server database. Next, using standard methods, we get a response in JSON format. 
Then we process this response using standard methods. Response using standard methods. This gets us an array of products that came from the server. We process this array in a cycle, and if a product is not found in the local database, we create it. So we received the list of goods from the server, but if you remember, our mobile application also allows us to create new products. Remember the voice data input feature? Thus, we need to make it possible to not only receive lists of products from the server, but to also send back items created in the mobile app. To do this, we have the put products to server command. We need to write a data processor for it. In our example, we are going to look at finished code. Everything is carried out on the server. The first part of the code is similar to the one we looked at previously. We connect the connection parameters to our server, then create a query. Specify the names of our publication and the object in the OData interface that we are addressing. We're working with a products catalog in JSON format. Next, using a standard 1C query, we receive the entire list of goods stored in our mobile device. Process it through the cycle. Process it through the cycle. We will send products to the server one by one. To do this, we will first create a map and then insert the following attributes into this map. Code, description, SKU, and our unique universal ID. Every 1C object has its own UUID. We will send this UUID to the server, and the server side will verify whether it exists in the database. If it doesn't, a new catalog element will be added. If it already exists, no changes will be made. Thus, we avoid duplicate records in our product catalog. So, we've created the map structure. Next, we serialize it in JSON and write it in string format. Then, we transfer it to our server using the post method. The server returns a response. If necessary, we can process it to, for example, verify whether the upload was successful, and if there were any errors for us to fix. This being a tutorial, we will skip this step. Thus, we've created two commands, update products from server and put products to server. Now, let's check how everything works. Launch the 1C server in user mode, go to the products catalog, and create an element. Name this item product from server, then open the products catalog in our mobile application. We can see two items here. Return to the start page, open the exchange form, and click Update Products from Server. Next, open the product catalog, refresh the list, and we see that the new product has appeared in our mobile database. Now, let's send over data from the mobile database. Open the exchange form, click Put Products to Server. Then, on the server side, press F5 and see that the products have appeared in the server database with all their properties and attributes. So, we've learned how to transfer the products catalog from a mobile application to the server and vice versa, as well as synchronize it to avoid duplicates. However, our primary goal is to transfer the inventory document from the mobile app to the server. To do this, we will create one more command, which will upload the document itself from the mobile app to the server. Open the mobile scanner server configuration, open the inventory document and the document form. Add the post to server command to the form and write some code for it. This command is also executed on the server. The command structure is similar to the way we synchronize the products catalog. In the same way, we receive the connection parameters for the server database, create names, and the connection string. Please note that here we are addressing the inventory document. Everything else is the same. Next, we form a special structure that will contain both the attribute data of the inventory catalog and a unique reference by which the central unique reference by which the central database will understand whether the given document is uploaded or not. Add our three attributes to the structure, then create an array. We put all our scanned goods from the tabular section in this array in a cycle. Then, in the cycle for each product, we form a structure which, in its turn, contains its, its attributes. We will also need a unique reference to the document and a unique reference to our product catalog so that the server database can correctly perform the upload and allocate our elements without duplication. Next, 
add the skew and quantity attributes. Then we place the structure we've just created into the array we've created earlier. After that, we add the complete array to the structure that we had created in the beginning. Accordingly, this code fragment serves to prepare the document data to be transferred to the server. As a result, we have a structure that contains all the necessary attributes to send to the server. Since we're working with the JSON format, we will have to serialize the data in that format. Use the standard JSON writer object. This code fragment is responsible for serializing our data into the JSON format. As a result, we will get the body string variable, which will include all the document data. Then we transfer the finished JSON string to the server using the post method. It returns a response that we can process if we wish. Our mobile application is almost complete. Now we only need to reassemble it and put it on the mobile device. After that, we'll need to test whether the exchange mechanism between the mobile app and the server side works correctly. First, make sure that our inventory document is absent from the, from the server database. The catalog is filled in, but the document list is empty. Go to the mobile application. One document has already been created here. Open it and click Post Inventory to Server. The code is run. Next, we return to the, to the server database and refresh the list by pressing F5. We see a new document. Open it and see that all the necessary attributes have come to the server from the mobile device. To sum up, we have developed a mobile application, a server application, and have implemented data exchange between them using an embedded 1C Enterprise Platform tool. This mechanism can be used in other integration cases, including with third-party systems. We will tell you about this in future videos. Thank you for being with us.